it is an infrastructure as a service technology company. And with me is the Chief Technology Officer, Colin Charles, to explain what StrongNode is doing. So welcome, uh, Colin. And just tell me a little bit about StrongNode. Give me an overview of what you're doing, and then let's dig a little deeper to the company. Thank you, Jane. Um, so StrongNode is basically infrastructure as a service company, as you mentioned. Uh, our aim is to actually make use of edge computing, where we move processing to the edge nodes. So um, I think you're probably familiar with cloud computing where everything is centralized and we pay a fee to multiple providers, be it you know, the Googles or Amazons or Microsofts. But here we're trying to make it a little bit fairer where you can actually do compute of certain tasks on regular home computers. So one of the first things we want to do, of course, is launch uh, distributed VPN service. So you have uh, VPN endpoints, that are on consumer IP addresses, which would allow you to potentially be in South Korea watching um, American Netflix, for example. Uh, because again, it's not, uh, it's not a set of IPs that are belonging to a data center, it's actual consumer IPs and the consumers are going to get paid. So if I'm, the con if I'm going to use the VPN service, I will pay. And if I'm providing an exit node, I will get paid. Mm -hmm. So uh, trying to make a bit more of a virtuous cycle in terms of getting people paid. And that's just the first of many things we're going to launch. We're also going to do things like uh, uh, edge computing cloud workers. So you can run small little programs on little edge nodes. So it sounds like edge computing is um, a key feature of the company. And just like I had just heard of edge computing a couple of years ago, kind of explain what exactly is edge computing? Yeah, fair enough. So edge computing is, uh, instead of you uh, computing things in central nodes in data centers, we move the processing of things closer towards the uh, end user itself. Mm -hmm. So another example of the VPN product, for example, is we won't be you know, letting you connect to random VPN nodes um, because you, know, you need quality of service, you need speed. So from a gaming standpoint, you may be actually connected to more local related um, nodes than you think. So that, I mean, that, that's also part of the company, right? To build on top of um, strong notice to build gaming and so forth. Okay. So um, generally speaking, edge computing is moving the processing and down to, towards closer to the user. And you so far see CDN companies do it. So the likes of Cloudflare um, and, uh, you know, Akamai, et cetera, they have actually got edge computing nodes because they've got points of presence at uh, data centers that are closer to the, to the user while your main data is actually hosted um, in one of, let's say Amazon's data center. So you, you're based in uh, New York, I guess. Yes, yeah. And, right. Yeah, so, you know, for example, uh, a, a good data center for Amazon would be in Virginia, whereas uh, you'd want to have edge nodes, points of presence down in New York as well. We want to bring that even closer by it being potentially your neighbor. Wow. Um, or if you live in an apartment building, yeah, it could literally be someone in your in your building itself getting the processing done much closer to you. So what is the benefit then to the user to have that processing closer to them? Yeah, the closer it is to you, um, you know, the better it is, obviously, in terms of uh, speed. So, for example, even when you watch your YouTube or Netflix, things are served from a local points of presence, such that you actually get uh, better quality, higher quality, data transfer is obviously lower. And then uh, what our um, claim to fame would be is that we're not going to pay you and users to provide these exit nodes as well. So it's not just going to be in the hands of corporations any longer. Uh, we will, of course, just take a little cut on both ends. But when I say little cut, you know, it could be the two to five percent cut. But uh, generally speaking, we instead of you doing this in data centers, we're going to do this on edge nodes. OK. Oh, that's interesting, too, because we have seen like some of these cloud computing companies get just I mean, Amazon makes most of its money from its cloud computing division. I don't think most people realize that. But, you know, Google's huge. Microsoft is huge. Um, but this is a way to kind of democratize all of that and maybe even protect privacy a little bit, too, because these some of these big cloud computing companies can shut down websites if they don't like them. Um, so this. Yes. Prevents so. That. 
so in, in, in many ways, we aim to be fully decentralized in everything we do. So uh, I don't know if you've been following, uh, but there's this uh, been this thing called Tornado Cash, uh, which uh, is an Ethereum smart contract that uh, literally got put on a on a watch list, and uh, immediately, uh, you know, the centralized RPC providers like Infura. So if you use a, a MetaMask wallet, you could you can't actually use this any longer. You use the RPC provider, and then of course the developers' GitHub accounts, etc., got shut down. This just happened, I think, yesterday as well. Um, so our aim, of course, is to be fully decentralized so that there is no central point of control and the chance of uh, any of this, you know, being, being hurt by law enforcement, et cetera, would be much, much more minimal because everything is now fully distributed. And yes, privacy is definitely something we care about. We keep everything fully encrypted in, in transit and on disk. Uh, so basically if you're, uh, when we do the cloud workers thing down the line, the product, when you are a company and you're going to be processing it, say on you know your machine, say your home machine, you're as as a user, Jane, you you're not going to be able to um, access what's being processed in those little chunks, because all that's going to be encrypted. So, uh, it's it's safe from that standpoint. It's also obviously very very private. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, because it does feel like tech is becoming kind of uh, big brotherish sometimes. So <laughs> this would prevent that. Um, so how can somebody use StrongNode? How do they find out uh, more about the company? Sure, um, you can find out more about us uh, at strongnode.io. And uh, we have a ID dashboard. So if you go to id.strongnode.io, it will actually let you log on to a dashboard. It allows you to do things like uh, know your customer because mm -hmm. <laughs> as much as we want to also make sure that uh, you are your privacy is fully protected, we also have to ensure that you are not uh, using a VPN service to um, peddle, you know, child pornography, for example. So while we will keep all this information in, in memory uh, at that point in time, we will obviously comply if there needs to be if you are a bad actor so that's why we do kyc and we do kyc completely internally as well yeah. and uh, once you get on the dashboard uh, fairly soon you should be able to download either a vpn client uh, and then pay us using your credit card or strong node token and then you can also get paid if you'd like to you know run an exit node and the vpn as i said is just the first product uh, in another six to eight months, we will launch the um, cloud workers option. So edge computing um, for actual little programs. So yeah, check us out at strongnode.io. And do people need any special equipment or anything different or a certain type of computer to be able to do this? Uh, the good news is we're starting off with uh, your regular Windows machines. Okay. We'll move on to, to Linux and Mac as well. And then eventually our plan is to also have it running on your on your iPhone and your Android phone and uh, other Android devices like your maybe smart TV that you may have uh, at home. Because smart TVs also have lots of idle uh, computing uh, power. And uh, I think if you buy a new one today, you might even find that some of them have VPNs built in to help you actually watch content that you are not allowed to watch by region locking. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Well, my uh, TV is fairly new, so maybe I'll check that out. I <laughs> didn't realize that. Yeah. Well, very interesting. And just another way I think that, um, you know, this technology is, is decentralizing digital, um, the way we operate digitally in the future. Absolutely. Okay. And giving power back to the people. Yeah, yeah, I know. it's uh, That'll be a big change from where we're at now. So thank you. Thank you so much, Colin, for coming in and explaining StrongNode. Thank you, Jane.